Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a little bit of a different video. As you can see, I am not in my usual filming video studio setup situation. Um, today we are going to be going through my freelance kit. Hey guys, editing Lauren here, just jumping in really quick. Because this video is a little bit longer, I am going to insert some timestamps here just to kind of help you guys navigate what I'm talking about in each segment of this video. I do give some background info not related to my actual product. So so if you guys are interested in just learning about specific topics or specific products that I carry, then this should kind of help you guys figure out where in the video I talk about each thing. Um, if you guys do not know, I am a freelance makeup artist. Um, I dabble a little bit. Um, we are currently in North Carolina, so if you're looking for a makeup artist in like the Fayetteville, North Carolina area, call me. I will leave my business Instagram and all that stuff here so that way you guys can follow or check me out if you're interested um, but yeah so I thought that I would just kind of show you guys what I take with me to a job um, just a little disclaimer I do lean towards more like formal makeup like I do a lot of military balls proms formals photo shoots things like that um, I do do some bridal but weddings really aren't like my primary thing I know a lot of makeup artists out there like they're like all about the weddings um, I prefer more like one-on-one -on -one experiences plus the demographic where we live if you don't know we are military so we do have a lot of balls and special events and things like that so that's just kind of my clientele at the moment but yeah I just wanted to get this video up for you guys I'm sorry if it's a little echoey I'm in our spare bedroom which is probably the cleanest room in our house um, and I kind of have the most amount of space so um, bear with me on the noise i love watching these videos i think they're so entertaining or if you're interested in booking you can kind of see the products i use and all of that in my setup um so these videos are great i'm always looking for fresh ideas and stuff so if you are a fellow makeup artist and you have any tips or suggestions that are like your ride or die or that you live by leave me a comment down below i'm always willing to learn try new things so i have been freelancing for about three years I would say. Um, I started dabbling a little bit in college. I've always loved makeup even in high school. I did my own makeup for prom. I did my friends makeup all the whole nine. Like I've just always loved makeup. Um, but I really started doing others pe other people's makeup in college and that's when I kind of started charging people. Um, I was in a sorority so it was really awesome having like sorority formals and like Halloween and all those like fun dated things and theme parties. That's kind of where I got my start um, so that part was really really awesome. And ever since then, it's kind of just taken off. It's been definitely a learning experience because like I said, we are military. We do move around frequently. So it's kind of hard to constantly have to like rebuild your business and all that kind of stuff, find new clients, basically pick up and start over wherever you are. Um, so I think that I have definitely had a very unique experience where there's been different demographics, different clients. There's been like different needs. I've had to change products based on weather, you name it. There's so many little things that play into what a makeup artist carries into their kit so um, my kit has definitely evolved significantly over the years I've invested a lot of money in my kit and I have tested a ton of different products on myself on friends and family it's definitely a learning experience and there is a little bit of a learning curve of finding what you like to work with not necessarily what looks best but what fits your application style and all that kind of stuff so again there's so much that plays into it so these are my preferences that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to love it or if it's gonna work perfectly for you this is just what I use which works best with my methods I do try to carry the majority of my products as high end. I do have some drugstore items that you will see, um, but I try and do this mostly because people are paying for an experience and they're paying for a service, but they're also paying for the product that you're using and they definitely want to get their money's worth. I understand that everybody starting out can't necessarily afford 40 different NARS or MAC foundations. I get it. Trust me. Drugstore is a great place to start. They have a bunch of shades and it's very affordable so you can afford multiple of each product that's the hard thing about being a makeup artist you can't just carry one foundation you need enough for every single skin tone that you're gonna be working with so I totally get it but there are some drugstore products that I like better than high-end and I'm not gonna compromise that if it's drugstore and if it's amazing and I love the way it looks it applies perfectly it lasts long 
I'm using it. Just because it has a high price tag and a fancy name and cool packaging does not mean that it is the best. So if you find something from the drugstore that you are absolutely crazy about, use it in your kit. It's fine, just don't make a big deal about it. I have experienced some clients that will not appreciate that and they will ask for something higher end and I kind of just explain to them why I like this product, why it's gonna look good for their skin, what it's gonna do for them, and usually I can get them to kind of compromise and like talk them off the ledge a little bit. Um, so that's just some advice how to navigate that. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I feel like I've been talking long enough and let me show you the goods. Okay, so this is my makeup kit and I am going to uh, change the camera angle and show you the breakdown of everything, but for now I wanna keep it far away so you can get like the whole effect of everything. So I carry a Zuka backpack. Um, I don't know exactly which one this is called, I don't remember, but I will definitely link it down below for you guys. And this thing is packed to the brim, but I love it so much. It's huge, it's very, very heavy. Um, but I just really, really love the backpack. I used to carry the Rolly train case and that was just an absolute nightmare trying to drag it upstairs. It just, it was such a mess and it took up so much space. It was so bulky and it was so heavy because the majority of it wasn't even products, it was the case itself. So if you're struggling with that, I recommend you look into this Zuka backpack. It's really, really cool. And it's also really awesome if you're a hairdresser because in this pocket here, which I actually keep some hair products, um, I am not qualified or trained to do hair, but every now and then I will have a client ask me, can you just curl my hair? Can you just do something like that? And I always tell them, listen, I'm not a hair gal, but I can do the best I can. If you're okay with that, then I got you. And nine times out of 10, they'll be like, yep, just throw a quick wave in my hair. So I do carry some hair products you never know. Also, I've been on shoots where the hair gal flaked or got stuck in traffic or was running late. And so the number one tip I can have as a makeup artist for you is always, 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 always be prepared for worst case scenario or the like whatever you think isn't gonna happen is gonna happen. So for that reason, I do carry some hair stuff, but it's really cool if you are a hair gal. It does have a big pocket here. So I will usually just keep a texture spray and then a dry shampoo in here. And then I keep my curling iron and a hairbrush in here. And it's really cool because I don't know if you can see, but this pocket is actually insulated. Um, and then I keep a comb and a cape in here as well. So you can put your hot tools straight back in your bag. You don't have to wait for it to cool. So that's a really, really cool feature. Um, when I'm not carrying hair stuff, I will usually just stuff some extra palettes. I will stuff towels, like whatever I just need to quickly throw in there in this pocket, nothing too fancy there. As you can see, when that pocket is full, I do just kind of strap my towel to the top here. It's not a very fancy or cute method but it gets the job done. I always carry a dark colored towel with me um, just because you don't know the surface you're gonna be working on. I don't wanna destroy somebody's really nice table if a powder spills, if I drop something. I don't wanna mess up people's furniture or if I'm in a hotel room, I don't want to drop anything on the carpet or anything crazy like that. And I love this for cleaning brushes as well. Um, a dark color is going to hide any mess you make really, really well. So I recommend black or like a dark gray. Try and stay away from white also because makeup stains. A lot of the times foundation and product, liquid products like that do not wash out of fat fabrics the first go around. So if you have a white towel that you've spilled something on, even if you've washed it, it's still gonna look really, really dirty. Being a makeup artist, half the battle is just being neat, clean, and sanitary. So a lot of my products in my kit, I kind of pride myself on them looking brand new. They are all very well loved. I've been using these products for a really, really long time, but I clean them to the point that they look like pristine. So when I'm pulling stuff out of my bag, people aren't like, ooh, that looks dirty or messy, or I don't know if I want her to put that on my face. Their mind is immediately put at ease because everything looks very clean and hygienic, and it's just so much more appealing. So on the other side here, we have two pockets. Um, in this top pocket here, I will usually keep some makeup wipes. Um, these are just the um, Neutrogena makeup remover towelettes, nothing too exciting there. And then I will always keep a pack of Altoids. Um, usually when I'm doing somebody's makeup, because you are in such close quarters, face to face, like breathing on each other, the first thing I will do before I sanitize my hands is I will pop one of these in there and then I will also offer my client one as well. Just, you know, to make the experience a little bit nicer. Um, you don't wanna be in somebody's face with really, really bad breath. 
Um, and then I do have a few of these baggies in here and some extra business cards. Um, if it's a wedding or a super formal event, I will actually give somebody a baggie with my business card. It's kind of like a referral card situation. And I have these little plastic jars with some wands that I will just pop their lip color in there. This I do not do for everybody because you don't want to be giving away a ton of your product for free. That's not the point. You don't want to basically give away an entire MAC lipstick. Just enough for them to touch up. It kind of enhances their experience. You go the extra mile. Um, I usually only do this for like brides or like the one-off occasion if it's like a really, really special event. And then in this bottom pocket here, I just keep some palettes. So I will kind of go through these really quickly now before we get into the bulk of the kit. And just so you know, I'm filming this after doing a client literally yesterday. So some of this hasn't been cleaned yet. I haven't emptied out my kit or anything from a previous job. So if stuff looks a little dirty or used, that's why. Um, so in here I carry two Juvia's Place palettes and then I carry a brow palette and then a eyeshadow palette. The first Juvia's Place palette I carry is the Saharan Blush Volume 1. I love this for my deeper skin tone clients. I make sure that I have a shade range that is going to suit somebody fair like myself or somebody with a deeper complexion. So I love this one. It has some really good blushes and highlights in there. Really, really amazing formula. Blend super, super well. I'm obsessed with Juvia's Place lately. I also keep the Warrior 2 by Juvia's Place. I love this um, for just some added neutrals. Sometimes I do an entire makeup look with this. I don't even use my actual eyeshadow palettes. I just love this because the black is so black and you have a really nice cream shade. You have some like in-between warmer shades. So I will dip into this actually quite frequently. I love this palette. And then I carry this BH Cosmetics Brow Palette. Um, I don't use this like a ton. As you can see, I have used it. Um, but I don't use this like super, super often. Um, I prefer a pomade. It's just a little bit easier for me to work with. Um, but this is perfect for people with really, really light brows that don't like a heavy brow. I can go really, really light handed with the powders. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more natural looking. Um, so I keep this just in case. This is kind of like a safety blanket item for me. And then I have this ColourPop palette. This is not necessarily ColourPop shadows. It's just like a Z palette I have and this is just all my colorful eyeshadows um, very very rarely if ever somebody asks for a colorful look but if somebody does I want to be as prepared as possible so I have some shimmer shades here these are a mix of Anastasia Mac ColourPop and I forget what these really big one these like really big pans are but again just a really nice selection of colors if that's something people want and I can easily combine these with my neutral palette to like literally come up with any look that somebody could possibly want so again nobody ever asks for color but I like to have it just in case so it unzips kind of like so and as you can see in here, I have all my Zuka bags and then in here I have a lot of compartments. So just to run through really quickly what I keep in these compartments. So in here I keep beauty blenders and also I have some down here. Again, I was just doing a client so I haven't cleaned those yet. In this pocket, I will keep a powder puff. I really like this when I do complexion first, which also is very rare. Usually I do eye makeup first, but this, if I need to touch something up, I just keep it on my pinky and it won't disturb anything underneath. And I like to keep all of this stuff, like sponges and applicators and stuff, in these separate compartments because it just keeps them cleaner. Um, they're not rolling around in dusty powders or getting highlights on them or cream shadows, anything like that. Um, it's just a lot more organized and neat. I can quickly grab whatever I need. I can see it really well. And then in this pocket here, I just have some cotton rounds to clean the face initially. And then in here, I have some just plain old cosmetic wedges and then up in this pocket here I love this bag because it has so many like fun little secret compartments um, I will keep my palette and my spatula again I like to keep this away from everything because once I sanitize it I don't want it to come in contact with a bunch of other unnecessary stuff so yeah just a double-sided spatula because when you are dipping into products of course cream products you want to scoop out and put on a palette you don't want to go in directly with the brush because you'll cross-contaminate and all of that fun stuff so now I'm gonna go ahead and 
and get into the main part of the bag. So I don't really have these in a particular order right now because as I was cleaning up, I kind of just stuffed things in. But the first thing I have on top is all of my disposables and I just got this little box off of Amazon. Um, and I just have mascara wands, liner wands, some lip wands, Q-tips, and then some smaller mascara wands. So you can kind of just see what I carry in there. I love this, it's super organized and I can just refill as I need. It saves so much space and so much time. Then the next thing before I break down what is in each pouch, I carry my two eyeshadow palettes. So these are just metal Z palettes from Makeup Forever. I love these things because as you can see, they are super, super slim and then the clear front allows me to see what's in each one. So the way I have these organized is I have my matte shadows in one and then my shimmers and pressed glitters in the other. So I'm not gonna go through each shadow one by one. If you want a video on that, let me know if you want something that detailed. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna kinda quickly show you guys what we're working with. So these are all of my shadows and I kind of have them ranging from like warm to cool tone to dark tones. I have a nice mix of red browns neutral browns blacks grays and then some purples because that's a really common like bridal shadow color the shadows i have in here these single shadows are a mixture of makeup geek anastasia color pop and mac i believe is all that i have in here um so really great formula blend amazing you know the deal and then in this one as you can see i have all my shimmers kind of organized the same way my lighter tones warmer cooler going into my darker tones i really only stay on like this side i'm not gonna lie i don't really dip into here as often and then over here as you can see i have some pressed glitters um, but I like to have a lot of options just to be safe and because these do hold so much in such a small packaging I just went ahead and filled it. You never know when you're gonna need them So yeah, these are all of my shimmer shadows in here All right So now I want to go ahead and show you what's in these individual Zuka bags that I have so this is the larger size here and this is actually my skincare prep bag. So the first thing that I like to keep in these bags is a brush cleaner and then a 91 or more percent alcohol. So this brush cleaner I use is just the Cinema Secrets and then I can go ahead and refill this whenever necessary and then I just, you know, refill these individual bottles. And then I will also keep a water with me as well. So these are just from like the travel section at Walmart honestly, and then I just put some labels on them. Then I also have my Bioderma. I love this stuff so much. This is a micellar, like makeup removing situation. So I will take this on a cotton round and kind of just go over my client's face before I start their makeup application just to ensure there's no additional product on there. So this is a really, really important step to prep the skin. For my moisturizers, I actually carry two of them. This is the Emberlease moisturizer that literally everybody uses. This is like a makeup artist staple. This is actually kind of like a primer as well. So you can just go straight on with foundation. You don't need to use a primer when you're using this I love this stuff it's really really great and then I have my Mac time check lotion I like this for pore filling or more mature skin tones that kind of need a little extra help so I really really like this for like my mothers of the bride anything like that I mean this works well on anybody honestly and then I also carry a Mac fast response eye cream as well. This is really great to help with puffiness. This is really great for brides or if you're doing makeup early in the morning, a lot of people will be like fresh out of bed and have kind of bags under their eyes and stuff. So this is a really, really helpful product for that. And then I also of course keep an Aquaphor and a MAC Prep and Prime. I love these two products to put on the lips and let sit while I do the whole makeup. So that way when I get to the lip portion of the application, their lips are like prepped and ready to go for whatever lip color or lip product I'm gonna be using. I do carry a few liquid illuminators with me. Um, I have this Anastasia Liquid Glow in the shade Rose Gold. This is really great for darker skin tones. You can use this as a liquid highlight or you can mix it into foundations. I have two MAC strobe creams. I have the pink one and then the peachy one. Again, to mix these into foundations for a really nice glowy finish or you can use them on top as a liquid illuminator highlight situation. Really, really 
really love doing these for like formal looks. I always carry an oil with me um, because you can use this in cream shadows, kind of like a Duraline from Inglot. Um, this is just the Beauty Bakery baking oil, but I really like this also to just pat onto really dry patches if somebody suffers from eczema on their face or psoriasis or anything like that. That way your products will not cling to any dry patches. I carry a few primers with me. Um, this is the MAC Prep and Prime. I love this for just like anybody. This is really, really great for like pore filling and just an all around really, really nice base. This is the Becca Evermatte Poreless Priming Perfector. I really, really love this for mattifying. Like this shit is matte. It's really, really good if you have an oily client. And then of course I have two Smashbox photo finish foundation primers. I have the green color correcting and then the regular pore filling clearish one. And I always get these in travel size A because it saves so much space and you hardly ever make it through one of these anyways. For facial mists, I always carry a MAC Fix Plus and then I do have this Tatcha Satin Skin Mist. This is the mattifying one. So I love this if the skin is just looking a little bit too powdery, if I need to wet a shadow, anything like that. And then of course this is really good for oily skin types. I love the MAC Fix Plus in lavender because it smells so good and it's just like calming and relaxing so it's really nice for the client during their entire experience. I use the P. Louise bases. I have it in rumor one, rumor two, and then I have rumor five. So between the three of these, I can mix to get people's perfect shade. I love these. I think this is my most used one probably, or this one. Actually, rumor two is my most used. These are an amazing eye base. I use it to carve out the brows. This just makes your shadow so pigmented. If you don't know about these, I highly recommend that you check them out. I'm obsessed. I like cannot do makeup without them. And then I do carry two setting sprays. I carry the Urban Decay All Nighter and then the Scandinavia Finishing Spray. This is the bridal one. So if you don't know, these are actually made by Scandinavia. As you can see, it says Urban Decay by Scandinavia right there. So these are actually kind of really similar products, but I prefer the all-nighter for like photo shoots and things like that where I need it to last, but they're not necessarily outside. And then this is like super glue for your makeup. I love this for any time somebody is gonna be outside or needs their makeup to last for like hours and hours. This is perfect for where I live in North Carolina. It's very, very humid. So you want everything to really stay in place perfectly. So I'm obsessed with this. If it's raining, if it's especially hot, anything like that, this will save people's makeup. Next up, I have this little pouch where I carry foundations. And again, I was coming from a job, so this isn't necessarily my entire foundation collection. I have a ton more shades if I need them, but this is what I was just carrying with me for that particular client. Um, so in here, and it, again, it's not very organized, but my favorite foundations to carry is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I have a few of these, and what I did is just put MAC pumps on them. These just come with like a screw top, so I love the pump on these because I don't waste product. I usually advise against clearing glass foundations because this makes me nervous that they're gonna break or anything like that and plus the packaging can be really really heavy but these are the only glass bottles that I carry everything else in here is plastic and then next up in here I have the Dior backstage face and body these are some of my favorites because they work for so many skin tones and you can really build them up to be full coverage or you can leave them to be kind of more a medium coverage with just like one application so I carry a few of these again these are not all my shades this is just like the basic. And then in here, I also have some Too Faced Born This Way, some NARS Radiant Longwear. I kind of switched these out and I just got these little bottles off of Amazon. And then I just filled them with the foundation and put a label on them. So that way it saves so much space. It makes it so much easier. And again, you never really go through like a full foundation bottle. So it's easy to just kind of keep those in there. So in this pouch here, I carry all of my concealers and I actually have two extra foundations in here I have one of the Giorgio Armani luminous silk foundation um, because the client that I had was looking for something really light coverage and natural as you can see I carry a buttload of concealers so the first things I have in here are the L'Oreal full wear infallible again these are not all of my shades I have more of these 
um, but this is kind of the average range that I will bring because this can be a good concealer for my deepest skin tone and this can also be a contour shade for somebody as well if I'm cream contouring. So just a really nice mix, um, pretty neutral undertones. I do have some more like cooler and then like a warmer. So if I need to contour or anything like that, those are really, really great. They're full coverage like Tarte Shape Tape, but not nearly as drying. So I find these work better for the majority of people's under eyes. They're not as like crepey or like cakey looking. Then I also carry a few of the LA Pro Girl concealers. I have two color correcting ones and then just two contour shades. I don't really care for these as under the eye. And then I also carry a white if I need to lighten up a concealer color. Um, so I just use these more as like mixing mediums, honestly, not as a straight concealer. I also carry two of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers. I have the shade Custard and then I have Chantilly. I really like these for more mature skin tones or a more natural looking finish. If somebody prefers something a little bit less coverage, this is typically what I'll go in with. And then I do have three of these Anastasia foundation sticks, but I keep them in my conceal and contour bag because I use Use these to contour. Again, I never really use this, but it's kind of like a safety blanket item. This is the Lorac Pro Conceal and Contour Palette. Um, it has some like yellowy tones if you need to color correct or anything like that. Again, cream contour, and it has some like cream highlight shades here as well. I don't really use this that often, but it's really nice to have in case I need to mix something or, you know, I run into any trouble if I don't have a particular shade or just as a backup if I run out of something. So this Zuka bag is a, another one of those large ones and I love that they have the pull here so I can just like pull them out of my bag. So in here is all of my powders. So the first two things I have on top is actually another is actually another Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette. This is the Nubian. I just love this for this shade in particular. As you can see, it's very well loved. Um, but this is a really great neutral palette. If I don't have it in my bigger palettes, then it's gonna be in here. And between all of those, I think I can figure it out. And then in here, I have a very well loved Lorac Pro contour kit. I really like this for contour shades. Um, I typically only use this one and this one and then if I need to brighten up the under eye I will go in with these two. I don't really use this highlighter that often But again, I just like to have a variety and this thing never fails me It blends really nicely and it works for like the majority of all skin tones So as you can see these are all my powders and it is filled to the brim um, I'm gonna start here in the back with my like setting powders and stuff and then we'll move up here So I like to use these makeup Maybelline Fit Me powders. Um, these are really, really great to add extra coverage and just to do a light set. This is what I use for like a full coverage, poreless, like all out, formal, need to look perfect and flawless. These are what I use. Um, and then I just labeled them on the side so that way when I'm putting them in my bag, I can see which color I'm grabbing. And then these are my MAC mineralize skin finish and I love these for dry or more mature skin tones or if somebody's looking for a really glowy natural finish these are really really beautiful powders I have a few of these um, and I use these a lot as just like a nice finishing powder if they don't want to be super matte or don't want something full coverage this is again just really natural and glowy and really pretty and then of course the one shade that I want to talk about in particular is give me sun because I will use this as a foundation powder but also as a bronzer if I want a really warm toned red bronzer so I keep a few of those in there and then the one bronzer I really carry is the butter bronzer and I have mine in the shade deep bronzer because it's very neutral toned. it's not too red it's not too deep sometimes I can get away with just using this and not even having to contour because it's like the perfect shade and again if I want something more red toned I'll go in with give me sun I also have this bronzer here in the shade casino from NARS if I have a deeper skin tone again just trying to accommodate all of my clients moving into the red rest of my powders. I carry a Laura Mercier Translucent Medium Deep. This is actually the glow powder. So for deeper skin tones, if somebody's looking for something glowy, if they're looking for something matte, I will go here. And if they want something glowy, I will go in here. Then I carry the Hourglass Veil Powder. I love this for literally any skin tone. It's so beautiful. It's not 
cakey or crepey looking. It just gives you such a soft focus, blurs everything out, and it's not overly drying. Then I also carry the Hourglass um, Ambient Lighting finishing powders. I really love these for brides or again for somebody looking for something really glowy. I will just go in with all three of these, swirl them together and just like dust them over the face. I think they're really beautiful finely milled powders. They're not glittery or anything, just really glowy and beautiful. If the skin is looking a little bit too matte or dry, I will just go in with some of these on top and it just brings so much life back in. So these are all of my blushes here. My favorite blush formula is the MAC Mineralize blushes again I really love these because they're so natural and just like have a beautiful sheen this is actually a matte one but as you can see it's not like a disgusting like flat matte it still has plenty of life in it so this is the shade warm soul it's so beautiful you guys know this classic blush I have to keep it in my kit this is just perfect neutral on any like light to medium skin tone I really love blush that's why I carry so many you do not need this many blushes and then I do carry this Becca blush. This is Nightingale for some like medium to deep skin tones, a really pretty mauve color. This compliments so many people. I love this. It's so, so pretty. So then we get into highlighters and kind of like blush. I am a huge highlighter junkie. You definitely do not need to carry this many, but I just love a variety. So the first one here I have is this Becca Vanilla Quartz highlight, and I love this for really light skin tones. As you can see, it almost looks white. Um, so this is for my fairest clients for sure. And then I carry two of the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in soft and gentle and then I have global glow these are a little bit more on the like average to normal person side if I have a client that wants like the most blinding highlight in the world I will go in with these Ofra highlighters so this is the Nikki tutorials collab in glow goals so, and I have it labeled as my gold one and then as like the champagne so I know what I'm reaching for. I have it on front and back. And then this is just a lighter champagne-y color. So I also love this for an inner corner highlight, a brow bone highlight. And then for my more reserved or natural gals or my more mature skin tones like Mothers of the Bride, people like that, I will use one of these Hourglass Euphoric Strobe Lights. And this is just a really like natural, like subtle, subtle glow. So next up I have my eye bag here. This has all of my pigments, glitters, liners. I love these L'Oreal Infallible Shadows. These are really, really pretty. I have a ton of those as you can see here. And then I also carry some of these MAC Dazzle Shadows. Um, I have two like really glittery ones here, kind of a gold and then a bronze. And then I have kind of more subtle, like just shimmer shadows these are like straight glitter as you can see love these so so pretty and then I also carry some peaches and cream pigments here you can see I have just like a nice variety of golds and silvers and kind of champagne colors. I also carry a few of the Makeup Forever Starlet Powders. These are really good for inner corner highlights or if I'm just trying to brighten up the lid a little bit. These are the Maybelline Eye Studio Liners. If you don't know these are the blackest, like most pigmented, long lasting, best gel liner ever. I, this is what I mean when you find something drugstore, like don't be ashamed to carry it if it works really well. So I carry a black one and then I carry a brown one as well. NYX glitter glue for those pigments. And then I just carry a few liners. I carry a nude, a brown, and a black. This is my second eye bag where it's kind of lashes and brow focused. So I carry a bunch of styles of lashes. These are kind of my more bold and then in here are my more natural. I will just hang on to these things and refill them as I need to because I think that I can get a ton of lashes in here and they don't take up a ton of space. So these are not necessarily all Kiss lashes. Um, some of the Kiss lashes are really, really great but I have Ardell's and stuff like that in here. Just like a bunch of different styles. Two mascaras. Um, I carry drugstore mascaras because I always apply false lashes for the most part and so I'm just looking for something that's gonna make the lashes black, not necessarily needs to be like volume or curl or anything like that. So I carry a L'Oreal Lash Paradise and then I carry a waterproof one. Some lash tweezers, I sanitize these after every use for sure, make sure you're doing that. I have my mini scissors in here to trim lashes. I have some tweezers. I will never tweeze a client's eyebrows. So if they need tweezers, I'll let them use them, but I will never tweeze eyebrows, I just, 
don't want to mess them up. And then I carry this little lash curler. Um, this is just to kind of mesh um, false lashes with your eyelashes. I carry a pencil sharpener, House of Lashes lash glue, and this one is actually latex free, so you don't have to worry about latex allergies or anything like that. And then I always carry this 3D brown tones from Benefit. I really like this as a brow gel. You need to go in here with a disposable mascara wand. Don't just go straight on with this applicator. And for my brow products, I prefer pomades just because they're easier to work with. Um, so these are all of my Morphe pomades. As you can see, I have some kind of like cooler blonde tones. I have some warmer browns, um, a cooler brown, I have just like a really nice variety and then I also have some really deep shades here as well. And then last but not least, this is my lip bag. So in here, I carry all of my lip products, obviously. Um, the first thing on top here is this Vuzette. I think that's how you say it, Vuzette um, lip palette where I keep all of my MAC lipsticks in here. I've just depotted them and I keep them in here instead of carrying the individual bullets around. I just have them labeled on the back. I have my usual taupe, yash, whirl, honey love, velvet teddy, all of those. And then I carry a few like reds and stuff up here. Then the rest of these are just lip liners, liquid lipsticks, and lip glosses. Um, I have some some Kat Von D, Dose of Colors, I have MAC lip liners, I just have a ton of nudes in here, I have Morphe, Stila, like the majority of my lip colors are all nude, um, but I will carry a few reds and pinks and stuff like that in there, and I have some red lip liners, some pink glosses, some peach glosses, again, just like a huge variety, I'm not going to go into this like into like huge depth. Um, I even carry like a bright bubblegum pink because between all of this I can kind of mix and get that custom shade that the client is looking for. So last but not least I wanted to talk to you guys about how I carry my makeup brushes. So this thing that I carry all my makeup brushes in I got from my Kit Co and this is called the Brush Buddy and the reason why I don't use a brush roll is because I also use this as a set bag. So I can kind of show you how I do that as well. Um, I know it's an extra piece that doesn't necessarily fit in my kit but I just think this is so much more sanitary and so much easier to set up. So basically it has two zippers here and then this clear cover. And I usually just, sorry, I had like extra sponges in there. I have kind of my powder brushes here and then all my eye blending brushes. And then like I said, I just did have a client, but this compartment here, so I don't know if you can tell, it's divided into six compartments. And then this compartment here, I will always leave empty. So my dirty brushes always go into this compartment. So that way I know which ones I need to clean and I know which ones I don't need to clean. And it also helps me if I'm doing multiple people in one session, that way I can just stick all the dirty ones and I know what I have left that's clean and I don't even have to clean any brushes in between clients. I just grab from the clean pile. All right, you guys, so that is pretty much the entirety of my kit. Um, this is kind of my simpler, quick, easy kit. Um, if I'm doing multiple people in a day, like if I had a wedding where I was doing like five people or so, I would probably bring a lot more with me. So this is kind of just my basic one client at a time kit. I have more than enough of what I need and I like a lot of variety, but I've also tried to remind myself and practice that sometimes less is more and simple is best. You don't wanna have a ton of product where you're wasting a lot of time deciding what you wanna use. As an artist, you do wanna practice your creativity, but at the same time, you are working with time constraints and you don't want somebody sitting there for four hours being like, listen lady, are you done yet? So before I conclude this video, I do really want to emphasize the importance of hygiene and cleanliness. You are using all of these products on many different people, so it's really important that you clean and sanitize everything after every single use. Even if I didn't use it, I will usually just give it a spritz with alcohol just because it's been in the vicinity of other products you never want to cross contaminate or have the transfer of bacteria it's really really important if you guys are interested in me doing a hygiene how i keep my makeup kit sanitized and products clean if you're interested in that let me know i can definitely film that but i think that's definitely a whole separate video because there is so much going on um one thing i did want to say that i did not show you guys in my kit is hand sanitizer um because it's in my car i always keep it in my car because it's like a huge bottle and i'll just kind of grab it with me um i did have a little one like a bath and body works one that like connected to my bag that's a really good way to make sure you always have hand sanitizer 
on you as well. You wanna make sure that you are using hand sanitizer between each client or before you touch anybody's face or any of your clean products. Again, just to avoid transferring bacteria, giving people eye infections, allergic reactions, anything like that, you always wanna have clean hands. I also recommend that while you have your client sitting there, while you're doing kind of initial consultation, asking them about their skin type, what kind of look they're going for, what products they prefer, finish, lashes, things like that, I will be like, I'll go ahead and just pump myself some hand sanitizer, rub it in while I'm listening and talking to them. You look engaged, but they also see you cleaning your hands. And again, it's just very reassuring to them that it's going to be a safe and clean experience and they have nothing to worry about. If you guys have any additional questions about some of the products I use or some of my practices as a makeup artist, leave them down below in the comments. I am happy to answer any questions you might have. And if you wanna see me expand on anything such as my brush collection, my specific shadows that I like, like to carry and again the kind of hygiene piece of it let me know I'm more than happy to do that for you guys thank you all so much for watching and be sure that you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any of my future uploads you can also take it one step further and click the little bell notification below it'll let you know every single time I upload a video usually twice a week sometimes three sometimes one you know depending on how busy life gets but thank you all again so much for watching and I will see you in my next video